50, 40. Whoa! Hi, I'm Stavros and good morning and welcome. And today you join me behind the wheel of the Mercedes Actros. But today's video will be more or less all about the Unimog from Mercedes. So I'm looking forward to showing you all around that. We'll also be doing a brake test on a Mercedes Actros. And I'll be showing you around a very old Mercedes truck, a 1622 from 1976. Oh yeah, stick around, it's gonna be a good one guys. Let's go. Okay, I'm now joined by Alistair. He's sitting beside me in the passenger seat and we're now doing the brake test. So Alistair, can you explain exactly what's gonna happen here? Now I do know that it has the advanced emergency braking and it also has predictive proximity control, isn't it? Yeah, so we've actually got it. We'll switch proximity control off yeah. and we'll let the truck brake. So the system will work on cruise control or throttle pedal. So what will happen first, you'll get an, uh, a visual display, an acoustic warning. The truck will then give us partial braking up to 50%. If you don't touch the brake pedal that the truck will then give it 100% braking. Right. To try and avoid or reduce the consequences of an accident. And we're driving the 2545 Correct, yeah. Mercedes. So we're back to conventional mirrors, uh, Alistair. Conventional mirrors on this one. Yeah, one of the reasons for this, with, with the system, what it's got is three brake applications in a five hour period. But because Actros 5, uh, it's brand new, we've not developed any software yet to initiate the braking phase time after time. As I say, there's only three braking events in a five hour period and a standard Actros. All right, okay. And this is your testing mile, is this? <laughs> the brake test area, we're not allowed yeah. to call it the mad mile. <laughs> the mad mile, okay. And uh, Alistair, you sometimes walk out in front of the truck to demonstrate the pedestrian, pedestrian detection, braking, yeah. yeah. Um, so Alistair, am I right in saying that it only detects pe pedestrians a metre high, is that correct? We, we, we say a, a metre high or a, a teenage sized person, but in reality yeah. it's anything above the sort of number plate is within the radar detection area. Alright, okay. So yeah, we'll swing around here. We will drive up to 50 kilometres, is it? 30 miles Third. an hour, yeah. yeah. Okay. Here we go. Now it does break quite harshly, so uh, uh, just be careful with the camera, Alistair. <laughs> Got it in both hands. Okay, so we'll get it up to 30, 30 miles per hour, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, let's get it up here now. That's oh, fine. Yeah, 27 is fine. Okay, let's see how it performs, guys. I'm hovering over the brake pedal. Oh, look at that! <laughs> on its own! And the hazard lights come on automatically. Look. I, I have to admit, guys, I was hovering over the brake pedal just in case. But, uh, Alistair, that's fantastic. I love it. Look. Look at the distance. Look. But, uh, wow. That's the advanced emergency braking. I love it. But there you go. That's just another safety feature in the Actros. into the Unimog. This will be my first time ever driving this truck and um, we're gonna do a bit of an off-road section here and see what it's like. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. Okay so let's just have a quick look inside 
the Unimog, that control there, just for operating all the attachments that would go on the outside of the Unimog, which we'll see shortly. Now you can move this steering column and all the pedals to the left. So if you wanted left-hand drive, you can do that just by sliding them all over. So that is a very good feature on the Unimog. So I'm just gonna hop outside and we have two cup holders here. Uh, that is the door handle down here. I was looking for it up here and Rob said it's down below. But uh, there you have it, Unimog, the U218. So almost 180 horsepower. So let's just stand back and we can have a look at it there parked beside the, uh, the rock there. So that's nearly three years old, Rob, isn't it? Yeah, around three years old. This one came in from Germany and it's also got the tire inflation system as well So you can lower the pressure on all four tires on this one But Rob you can just walk around with me there and uh, we can just explain to the viewers just some of the systems here because you see all the colored uh, Parts here. Yeah, these are the outlets for the spool yeah. valves here. Yeah, so for your front attachments, okay? And then we have the, uh, then the yeah. front PTO shaft. PTO shaft here, yeah. Yep. And we've got more hydraulic systems here, isn't it? That's correct, yeah. And Rob, I noticed as well, these lamps, you can extend these up the pole. That's correct. Look. Yeah. So depending, yeah. if you've got a snow plow on it, you might need to put them higher. Yeah. So you're not shining up the snow plow. And Rob, we'll just walk around the back there. Um, it does have the drop side flat body, so you can have all three sides down. Uh, if you want it completely flat, but I just want to walk around to the back here. You see the look the fans at the back Yeah, that's <laughs> the oil coolers yeah. the hydraulic system The oil coolers, all right. Yeah. Now Rob, if we come down here You're gonna just explain to the viewers like because this is what makes the Unimog kind of unique, isn't it? it portal axles Portal axles. Yeah, so with a normal normal uh, vehicle you'd have a drive shaft coming from the differential into a hub into the wheel. Yeah, with these, you've got the center differential, the drive shaft goes along, and then there's a set of drop gears taking the, it down, yeah. and then a the stub axle coming out for the, for the hub for the wheel. The actual differential on this is a lot smaller than a normal differential, because it's got a very small crown wheel. Now you normally yeah. have a crown wheel and pinion to reduce the gear reduction, reduce the gear in. But it, this can reduce its gear in in the drop gears. So you don't need to have such a big crown wheel. Yeah. So hence you're gaining more ground clearance again. Oh right, so that's the whole idea Rob, yeah. isn't it? To have it as high up off the ground as possible. Absolutely, yeah. And to allow for the mm. chassis to flex. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So oh. it is a magnetic mounted Oh yeah, the camera. camera. Yeah, it's like a magnetic camera. You can pull it off and position it anywhere you want. Or put it for the hitch when you're hitching to, yeah. to implement. But let's just stand back here and have a quick look at it. Yeah, indeed, yeah. The air brakes, <laughs> and the hydraulic brakes yeah. for your trailer. So the U4000, you'll notice as well, of course, it has a longer uh, wheelbase yes. yeah. than the U218. And it's also a crew cab there. But uh, Rob, how deep would you be able to go into water with these? Any idea? This, this has got four foot of wading depth. Four foot? Four foot. Okay. Yeah. Let's just give them a quick look on the inside of the U4000. Just so you can see the differences between the old and the new. So uh, yeah, the new one actually, <laughs> it looks a lot better, Rob, on the interior than this. But uh, yeah, you've still got a clutch pedal on this, Rob. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's just uh, give them a quick look back again at the two of them parked beside each other so that they can see the old model on the right and the new model on the left. Now I was in earlier with Rob and guys this section it's, it's uh, pretty crazy alright but very enjoyable. Okay so we have a clutch pedal yeah. and Rob is telling me that I need to go through the gears manually yes. so clutch in every time um, so we'll have to pull up our lever. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So you pull up the lever, then depress yeah. the clutch and fully, yeah. and that then changes into the next gear. But we won't be using many gears because no. we'll be driving no. very slow. Yeah. Okay. So clutch out nice and slowly. But Rob, I would say 
just guessing that you would prefer this to have a clutch, yeah? Rather um, than be fully not, automated. Not, not really. Yeah? Yeah, if you're going off-road, so we've got to the right. Oh yeah, okay. If you're going off-road, sometimes it's nicer to have a clutch, you seem yeah. to give a little bit more control. But yeah. I'm completely happy using it in, in auto. Yeah. So will I keep it in first gear? Yeah, we'll leave it in first because we'll go across these bumps. Oh yeah, we drove over these earlier. That's it, yeah. <laughs> So it's gonna get bouncy here now, guys. That's it, so nice and slow. Yeah. So come off the throttle, right off the throttle, leave it a tick over. Oh, you can leave it a tick over. Yeah. Oh, look at that, it's not stalling. So look. Turn the diff lock to the first position. Okay. That's it. This one, in the middle. That's it, yeah. Okay. Whoa, you can you could feel it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Look at this. No yeah. consideration for the cameraman here. <laughs> But Rob, Rob, you can feel the back axle yeah. doing almost this. Yeah. The clever thing with the Unimog, yeah. part of the suspension is through the coil springs. Will I go half and half? Yeah, half yeah. and half. Okay. And part of it is the, the chassis is designed to twist. All right. So all the components that are fixed to the chassis are three-point mounted to allow the chassis to twist. All ah, right, okay. If you mounted the engine with four mounting points, the engine would become part of the chassis and wouldn't be able to, the chassis wouldn't be able to twist. All right, yeah. that's a very good point actually, yeah. So you knock your diff, centre diff lock out, so back to, oh. and then turn to the right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the minute I put it into that second position, you could feel it <laughs> going around. <laughs> We're going up this section here now. I keep it in first gear. Yes, you may as well. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. We're still we're still at takeover. I don't even have my foot on the accelerator. Look. Look at that. And it was able to pull us up there. Look. So it's got good low end torque, Rob. That's the one. <laughs> low gearing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we're not going up that other section. No. Oh, that's the one I wanted to do! <laughs> I showed you a bit of footage earlier on with the section up there, but uh, no, we're not going up there, I'm afraid. Huh? Rob doesn't want me hitting any of the trees. <laughs> this is this is the baby of the fleet. Is it? Yes. Yeah. And this is um, what, 180 horsepower? 180 horsepower. Yeah. Similar horsepower to that one, but that's got a bigger carrying capacity and longer wheelbase. Oh yeah, yeah, longer wheelbase, yeah. But this is what we call a tool carrier. Yeah. So I'm just going to park it here, just so yeah, that we can so give clutch, them a look. Clutch, clutch, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm too used to the automatics. <laughs> I nearly stalled it, guys. No, so you see, Rob already demonstrated it. It, it's capable of a lot more than just that. So that's why earlier on you saw that footage already with us going up that hill. But uh, yeah, I'd like one for myself. <laughs> We've got quite a few in stock ready for you. There's plenty in stock guys. So get ordering your Unimog and uh, Rob can show you exactly what it's capable of. But uh, as we say, you can get the new model in a longer wheelbase, just like this one, the U4000. But it was good just getting a quick brief look at the Unimog. So let me just show you around some more Unimogs on display here so you can have an idea of the applications. Uh, they vary so much, it's fantastic. So uh, yeah, we've got this one, it's a sweeper. So this is the U423 Unimog and you see all the hydraulic pipes like we showed you in the other one. But, uh, and then beside it we have this, uh, it's a wood chipping Unimog. So you would fold down the side here and drop in all your hedging and wood and chops it all up and shoots it out through the top here. So that is the wood chipping application. And then we swing over here to the U318. And uh, this is for cutting grass. So you see this, the way it all extends out, you can cut a hedge down the side of a road. So uh, that's very good, isn't it? The U318 for your hedge cutting. And we swing over here then, we have, this is for cultivating land uh, on the back of this Unimog. But uh, yeah, it's fantastic to be able to see them all here, look. And we have a gritting Unimog here. So the great thing about these is that 
If you're only using these for six months of the year, you can have them doing other work rather than sitting at a yard doing no work. You can take off your gritting um, big unit there at the back. And look, we've got a snow plow at the front as well. But uh, on the U530 Unimog. And then if I swing over here, look at this. We have another grass cutting Unimog. Uh, the U530, so you can cut even wider grass area with this one, with the back. Okay, so this is the brand new U4023. So this is the replacement to the Rock, the Crew Crab one that we've seen over with Rob. So uh, check this out, brand new model, the U4023. So uh, very good to see that on display with all the rest of the Uni mugs and the grass cutting one as well. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd show you around all those Unimogs just to give you an idea of what it's capable of. So many different applications, it's great. Okay, I just have to give a shout out to Dominic Newby. He came down in this classic 1622 Mercedes. 250 miles he drove here today. But uh, this truck is absolutely immaculate from 1976. Uh, I showed you all around this at Truckfest Peterborough, so check out that video if you want to have a full walk around of this classic Mercedes. So I'm in Dominic Newby's 1976 1622. So Dominic, I just noticed how big the steering wheel is. This is the first thing you notice, like it's huge. But uh, we also have this small little pedal down here as well. That's the washer, your washer jets there for your windscreen. But uh, so, we're just gonna take it for a quick spin. Oh. So try and get, oh yeah, I forgot, no seatbelts. <laughs> okay, and uh, oh yeah, it's down here. I was reaching for this. What's this one, Dominic? Trailer brake. Oh, trailer brake, oh yeah. You remember those, <laughs> the trailer brake. But uh, Dominic, so the gearbox, let me, uh, is this a four over four? That's right, yeah. yeah? Okay, a simple four over four and uh, your range changer there. No splitter. Okay, let's uh, use the handbrake there. We don't want to be rolling back. Okay. Yeah, okay, we're off. Man, that steering wheel is big. <laughs> okay. Too bad, Dominic. The gearbox is actually quite good for its age. We'll just get it up to third gear here. Yeah. Yeah, the gearbox is quite good. Yeah, this is definitely the oldest truck I've ever driven. And the truck that gets the prize for the biggest steering wheel. <laughs> prize number one. And is there a horn on this? Oh yeah, there we go. So let's see, can I get it up into fourth gear? There we go. Wow. Now Dominic, you know what? I'd nearly like to take this the 250 miles back home <laughs> for you. No, this is nice. The steering isn't even that heavy. No. Look. Wow, for 1976, like, and they had steering as light as this back then. Yeah. I would have even thought the steering would be heavier back then, but it's not bad at all. And of course, the visibility is fantastic. <laughs> Look. Huh? Like, you're very close to the windscreen as well. Let's just knock it down into third gear. Wow, oh, Dominic. I mean, the gearbox like has yeah. very little play, nothing like. It's very tight, isn't it? Yeah. For its yeah. age, like. God, I've driven trucks that have been a lot more newer than this and very sloppy gearbox. But uh, you've obviously looked after it. But uh, yeah, that was just a short drive around the car park. But, oh man, I like it. <laughs> so Dominic, I'm going to let you uh, get on with your long journey home. Thank you. 
And so you enjoyed your day anyway? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, the handle's back here, look. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so no such thing as a adjustable steering columns back then? Yes. It has it? Yeah, has it? What? It's, it's Oh, I don't want to adjust it on you because yeah. you'll only ruin your setting. But uh, yeah, I didn't know it had. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And you've got this. Summer. Yeah. The bone. Yeah. I could sit in this for a while now, just looking at everything and just wondering how things used to be. <laughs> I mean, Dominic, it's in a different world now, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't absolutely. it? Huh? from Mercedes-Benz in the UK. I really enjoyed my time around Wentworth Park, driving the Unimog, such an interesting vehicle, what it's capable of and all the different applications you can put on it. Um, yeah, really interesting vehicle and the way that you can slide it from left-hand drive to right-hand drive, I really did like it. But uh, yeah, and then the brake test in the Actros, it'll just show you how good that safety feature is. And driving Dominic Newby's classic 1622 from 1976 he has that truck pristine but yeah i do hope you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up if you did and i'll chat to you all again next weekend for another video so until then take care thanks for watching guys Cheers! alistair there's some amount of trucks on this site Object in front of me, 60, 50, 40. Oh! Woo! <laughs> there we go.